Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I wanted to talk about kind of an old air paper. It's not really that old, it's from 2018, but it will allow me to talk about a lot of uh, cool things about beetles. So before we get into that, remember to like and subscribe, leave some comments, it helps me out a lot. So the paper, an early and mysterious hysteric inquiline from the Cretaceous, found in amber, and I will explain what all of those words mean if you don't know. Um, this is a pretty neat paper about uh, really one of the f earliest and first times that a certain group of beetles was found to be existing during the Cretaceous, so along with the dinosaurs. Um, and those beetles are the hysterids. This, these are drawings of the hysterids. These are sometimes called the clown beetles. Uh, more frequently, they're just shortened, the name is just shortened to hyster beetles. Uh, but some, I think they used to be called the actor beetles because one of the cool things about them is that when they're scared, their defense mechanism is to play dead. So that's pretty neat. And a lot of beetles will do that uh, or they'll do something similar to it. Uh, if you scare them, they'll kind of throw themselves off of whatever they're holding on to and curl up into a ball and play dead. But this paper was published in 2018 uh, from authors from Clemson and the University of Oregon. Uh, about these beetles that were found in amber. So things that you need to know about the hysterids. So there's a lot of variability. Some of them are extremely small, like one millimeter, but others can just be kind of regular small, like the, uh, you know, the size of your pinky nail or something like that. Uh, but they have a lot of characters in common. These are drawings, but this is what they look like in real life. Uh, and they have some pretty distinctive characters. One, they frequently have these projectile jaws clubbed antennae, but specifically clubbed and semi-elbowed antennae. They're usually fairly oval shaped, pretty pretty smooth ovals. Sometimes they're quite shiny black, sometimes they have colorations, uh, and they pretty much always have the tip of their abdomen down here showing. So there are elytral wings, uh, which, you know, is the shell of the beetle, as it were, don't completely cover the abdomen. They always have a little bit of the abdomen sticking out on the back. Uh, sometimes they're a little more rectangular shaped, uh, like up here, where they're more like bullet shaped, but you can still kind of tell that they're the same beetles. They have, you know, the, the antennae, the jaws, the shiny uh, cuticle, and this butt sticking out. But they can be very, very small. So frequently they'll be there and you won't notice them. But they live in all sorts of environments. They eat all sorts of things. So across the, across the uh, family hysterity, they tend to be omnivorous, but different lineages of these beetles tend to feed on specific things. Uh, but the options are many. So uh, additionally, a lot of these beetles have very complex symbiotic relationships with other animals, which is what this paper in particular is about with these Cretaceous uh, insects trapped in the amber. So until 2009, uh, there were no hysterid beetles known from amber that were more than 40 million years old. And then starting in 2009, they began to find these hysterids in amber that was much older, like 100 million years older. So this really doubled the uh, length back that we could go where we could learn about the evolutionary history of these beetles. So in this paper... Uh, published in 2018, this was only the third hyster beetle ever found in amber, uh, dating back to the Cretaceous. So it was kind of a big deal. Nowadays, uh, so what? how many years now is it? It's uh, seven years into the future, it's 2025, and we we still only know about 19 or 20 uh, uh, specimens that, are ha that have been recovered from amber of specimens dating back 100 million years. So it's still pretty rare to find these. The beetle that was found in this amber uh, is a new genus and species with no close relatives. The, the genus is uh, Amplectohister, which means the, the hugging hister, uh, Amplectohister tenax, so the tenacious hugging hister. And that gets into uh, some of the things that we think we know about it. So in this amber, this is this the amber in question. So there are actually three, spe three different insects and or arthropods in this amber. I believe this is the hyster beetle, this is another beetle that was saved, and this is a velvet mite that got destroyed when they were trying to uh, cut up this amber. So that's unfortunate. But this is the hyster beetle that was found. 
So there's some weird things about this that they do point out in the paper. Uh, and I will link this paper and any other uh, things that you might need if you want to read any of these materials. So this hister beetle, this is the head up here. You have the pygidium, so the tip of the abdomen down here. This is the underside, so this is the venter. This is the dorsum. Uh, and there's this white bluff. They, they didn't really go into this, but this particular specimen seemed to be covered with this white bluff. Could it be a fungus? Maybe. Could it be an artifact of the amber? Maybe. Uh, some sort of chemical reaction that occurred on the beetle's cuticle, maybe. They didn't really go into it. They got a bunch of different views of this, which is how they figured out that this was a different genus and species than anything currently alive. But there were some really strange things on this history beetle. One, it's not very big. From the tip of the pronotum to the tip of the elytra, it's only 1.4 millimeters. So this whole thing is at most one and a half millimeters. And you will notice that they have uh, two pairs of shorter legs, the pro, pro legs and the meso legs, and then the meta legs, the hind legs, are huge, huge and hooked. And additionally, what you can't really see because of occlusions in the amber, but which they managed to clean up a little bit and they showed in their drawings, is that the abdomen is extremely hooked. There is this extreme concavity of the abdomen. And they drew out some of it. This is what drawings of the head look like. And then, you know, that the all important hind leg. It's this very, very large hind leg compared to the rest of the body. And the importance of this hind leg that the authors argue after going through what it could be and, and disqualifying some of it. So, for instance, they disqualify the idea that this was used for mating because, uh, Although some beetles do hook onto their mates, the males will hook onto the females. Uh, it doesn't really explain this extreme hookage in the abdomen unless, you know, the beetles had some sort of weird uh, hooking mechanism on the top of them. Uh, and it wasn't entirely clear if this was a male or a female. There were some strange things. And generally with these hooking uh, mechanisms, they don't have such large hind legs. It's usually larger forelegs and things like that. So they disqualified that. And then sometimes you'll find this characteristic on hister beetles that live in birds' nests because they will attach themselves to the birds. But during the Cretaceous, there were no birds. So this, this isn't a bird uh, inquiline. And this is the word that keeps coming up. It, it, in the title of the paper, it was talking about inquilines. Inquilines are um, nest parasites. And this occurs a lot with arthropods. They're arthropods that are specifically evolved to live in the nests of other insects and to take advantage of those nests. And they do argue that this was likely an inquiline. And what they think this was, and there is evidence in modern hysterids of doing this, is that this back leg, or these two back legs, and this hooked abdomen were used to hook themselves firmly onto other arthropods. And so this was likely a nest parasite of another arthropod. And specifically, what it is likely a nest parasite of are ants, which uh, there are hysterids that attach themselves to both ants and termites, but they are much more common with ants. And what is interesting about hysterids at this time during the Cretaceous, this is the period where ants and ant colonies actually started to become common. So it is very likely that this is one of the first hysterids to develop this sort of symbiotic relationship with ant colonies. So that's really, really cool. So this what this looks like uh, in practice is this. And this is something that still occurs now. This is a paper from 2017. Newly discovered beetle catches a ride on the back of army ants to get around. And these are, this is a hysterid on an ant. And when you look at it from the top, uh, you can't really see it. But this abdomen of the ant right here, that you think is an abdomen, is not an abdomen. It's the beetle. And this is the beetle's head. This is the beetle's head. This is its jaw. And it's attached itself to the petiole of the ant, the thin little waist of the ant. And if you look at it from the side, this is the hysteric beetle with its little legs coming off the back. And this down here is the ant's abdomen. And it attaches itself to the back of the ant to get around. And then the ants take it wherever. These are army ants, so they don't, they don't uh, set up permanent colonies. 
But similar things happen with ants and hysterids that live in the ant colonies. And basically, the hysterid holds onto the ants to get around in ants with colonies, like the one that we were talking about here, what is likely happening with this guy here. And it would uh, go to the ant colony, it would live in the ant's nest, it would probably eat the ant's food, or it would eat other arthropods that are in the ant's nest. And these sorts of hysterids actually give off a pheromone that calms the ants so that the ants don't attack it. And they just kind of hang out in the ant's home and uh, they don't really bother it too much. Sometimes they'll eat a little bit of food, but that's it. And they don't really cause any damage. They just kind of keep to themselves and the ants just tolerate it. And so this paper is uh, evidence of a hundred million years ago that this was occurring then as well. So that's really neat. So I'll talk to you guys later, but I wanted to share this with you. I'll link all of the uh, articles in the description. See you around.